Hi students, greetings and Assalamualaikum. So this is chapter 5 of our syllabus on customer value driven marketing strategy by looking into creating value for target customers. So as you can see here, chapter 7 is in your textbooks. All right. Uh, let's look at the learning objective. There are four of them. The first one, to define major steps in designing customer-driven marketing strategy. So we're going to look at what is actually market segmentation, targeting, differentiation, as well as positioning. And then we're also going to discuss the major basis of segmenting consumer and business markets. The third learning objective, which is to explain how companies identify attractive market segments and choose a market targeting strategy. And lastly, in this chapter, I'm going to discuss with you how companies differentiate and position their products for maximum competitive advantage. So let's get started with the first learning objective, which is to define the major steps in designing customer-driven marketing strategy. We're going to look into what are actually market segmentation, targeting, differentiation, and also positioning. All right, um, as you can see here, we remember in chapter one, we have learned about the value that customer would like to achieve or uh, receive whenever they buy things, right? Be it a service or a product. So. Uh, every company, they would like to create this value for their targeted customers, all right? So in this concept, the marketing will boils down into two questions, which is the first one, which customers will we serve, okay? And then secondly, how will we serve them? So of course, the tough part is actually coming up with the good answers to these particular simple questions, all right? Which the goal is to actually to create more value for the customers, all right, and you must know that you are not the only seller. You are not the only one that have the product for the customer. So you have competitors, all right? Other people that sell similar products like what you, uh, like what you are selling. So customer will actually buy from you or they can choose not to buy from you and buy from other sellers. But you don't want that to happen, all right? So uh, in creating the value for targeted customers, we will look in terms of um, how do we select our customer? Okay, that is when we do segmentation, which dividing or divide the total market into smaller segments. And we can also do targeting, okay, whereby we select the segment or segments to enter. And then we decide on the value proposition, like what value do we want to give them in terms of differentiation, whereby you differentiate the market offering to create a superior customer value. From the word differentiation here means it's totally different than the others, yeah? So you basically offering something that is unique, all right? Of course, superior customer value, meaning to say you want to give something different, something unique, at its best quality, that customer will value that particular product or service. And lastly, we can also do positioning, whereby we want to position the market offerings in the minds of the target customer. I will explain further on this positioning in the later slides. Yeah. So um, let's look at the learning objective number two, to list and discuss the major basis of segmenting consumers and business market. Now, what is actually market segmentation? You have seen here just now, you have the segmentation, right? By dividing the total market into smaller segment. Do you know what is a segment? Segment is actually a sub subgroup, okay? Or smaller um, area or um, basically you can say smaller groups, lah, right? So, um, so when you do market segmentation, all right, it requires you to divide a market into smaller segment, which with they have distinct needs, characteristics, or behaviors that might require separate marketing strategies or mixes. Meaning to say, you would like to actually look at the whole market, all right? And from the whole market, you will actually divide them. You remember market are a group of people, right? These are potential buyers or potential customers. I think you can hear the dog barking. Please ignore that. They, the dog is also wanted to listen to me. Okay, anyway, um, you're talking about the market segmentation. Market is a group of people whereby there are a lot of them. Okay, so you can't afford to, let's say, just uh, assume that everybody will be your market. Meaning to say, not everybody will buy your product, isn't it? Okay, so that is when you divide this particular market into smaller segments. 
Okay, so let's say you have 100 of them. Perhaps you want to divide into five, for example. Not necessarily 20 each, okay, but it can be any combination. But because let's say you have five products for five different market, right? So that is when you group them into smaller subgroup or smaller segment here, which each group, okay, are different than the other. But inside the same group, okay, they might have same characteristics or behavior, okay, that will share same marketing mix, all right? But the other segment may not share the same marketing mix, all right? I know you may not have the idea right now, but just imagine like this. You're talking about, let's say, I think you're very familiar with shampoo, right or not? Shampoo, I think girls, yeah, like guys, I'm not so sure whether you do have shampoo or not. But let's say you go to the supermarket, okay, or you go to Watson or Guardian, right? I'm sure you've ever been there, guys. If you've never been to Watson or Guardian, please go. And then you go to the shampoo section, all right? You will see there are many brands, of course, Let's say we take one brand, Pantene. Bear in mind, I don't use Pantene and Pantene don't pay me to say this. Right, you take Pantene, yeah? Pantene is one of the shampoo brand sold by P&G, Procter & Gamble. This is the main company or the uh, parent company of Pantene. So, they have brands of Pantene and in Pantene shampoo, there are many types of shampoo Pantene. Okay, you will see that there is a... Um, shampoo i don't know is it smooth and silky okay you have smooth let's say you have smooth and silky one shampoo purple color and then another shampoo pantene also blue color which is for anti dandruff next you have another shampoo pantene also brand pantene but it's um i don't know red color maybe which is for anti hair fall Next one is for colored hair. So the color of the shampoo is orange, for example. So why will Pantene offer different types of shampoo? That is when Pantene is actually segmenting their market into smaller segments whereby there are people who have silky hair. So they want to make their hair silkier. So they will buy that silky, smooth and silky shampoo. Another person might have dandruff problem. So what this particular person need is actually anti-dandruff shampoo. So that's why Pantene offer a marketing mix, a product just for this group of people. Okay. And then you have the perm hair. A lot of people perm their hair or color their hair. So there are different needs for those kind of hair. Therefore, you are actually segmenting this particular market into several segments which you have all those types of shampoo just now. So that will be your, actually, the characteristics or behavior, okay, of the persons that might require a different needs or different shampoo from the other shampoo. Okay, I hope you get the idea now. Now let's look at what are segmentation that we're going to learn eh? in this particular chapter. We're going to learn on the segmenting consumer markets. So remember, consumer market meaning to say these are the people who will actually buy for their own personal consumption or household consumption. And then we're going to look also on segmenting business markets. So business markets are those businesses or companies or shops or sellers that buy products for their businesses. Okay. Next, we're also going to look at the segmenting international market. And lastly, what will be the requirement for effective segmentation? Okay. So these are the four, uh, what they call it, basis of segmenting consumer market okay geographic segmentation demographic segmentation psychographic segmentation and behavioral segmentation so let's first look at what is actually geographic segmentation so geography from the word geographic it's about geography lah okay whereby you divide the market into different geographical units such as by nation, region, states, countries, cities, or even neighborhood. Therefore, you have four P's. Remember your marketing mix. So the marketing mix are different for each geographic location. Okay. Um, another unit of geographic is the climate, which is frequently used because of its dramatic impact on the residents' needs and purchasing behavior. 
All right. So climate is also, of course, you you learn geography. Sorry, you learn the uh, weather, temperature, and also seasons in geography is also, isn't it? So that is part of the geography segmentation whereby you are looking at the weather or the climate of a country or even a region or continent. Yeah. For example, now in the states, for example, in the United States, what will be the season now? Do you know? And season in US is not similar or not the same as season in China or is even in Australia, for example. Okay, so you get to know how does this climate actually um, uh, requires people with different marketing mix, especially when you talk about clothes that way that way every day and also the um, food. Okay, especially let's say during summer. Okay, you know what are the things that people will demand on summer uh, during summer? Okay, so summer will be things that are because summer is very hot. Okay, so uh, typically a lot of uh, products are um, designed according to this particular seasons because of the climate, not just now. Okay, because winter, for example, then you will need winter coat, right? In Malaysia, for example, you may not want to sell your winter coat in Malaysia or even some other Asian countries that are located at the, uh, you know, the Greenwich line, is it? They call it, okay? Because we don't have winter or we don't have four seasons. So you don't see people selling winter coat for, to Malaysian, okay? Or when you talk about um, the uh, home heater, for example, we do have home air conditioner, right? Air condition because our weather sometimes is very hot. So we need air con in our houses but we don't need heater in our houses no matter how cold it is outside or rainy days or rainy seasons all right you may not want to own a heater in your house in malaysia but if you are in the countries where have you have four seasons all right you may require the heater for you to heat the whole house during winter because you don't want to stay so cold all right so other than that Still in the demographic segmentation, yeah? I think you remember that you have learned about the demographic uh, factor, right? Yes, it is also related to that, whereby you can also segment the market based on their age and life cycle stage, which you're dividing them into different age and life cycle groups, okay? And uh, other than that, the most famous or the most easiest segmenting consumer market is based on gender because it is so obvious that male and female requires different marketing mix okay and um especially clothing lines all right uh, other than that the skincare as well and also the cosmetics okay you can see that nivea for example then you have nivea for lotion for skincare and all those things right then you also have nivea for men so that is when nivea segmenting their products not only just for the ladies but also to the guys all right other than that under demographic segmentation you can also summon your consumer market based on their income okay which divided divided lah. dividing the customer or the market into different income segments that means that there are price range okay of the product uh that's why uh, let's say you talk about airlines i think you are familiar with airlines right um there are business class and also the uh, economy class that is when they segment the market into in based on income segmentation okay so first class or business class of course those people with higher income but the economy class for people that may not have that particular higher income to buy the ticket flights okay that is so simple next one we look at the psychographic segmentation yeah psychographic so psychographic meaning to say you are dividing a market into different segment based on social class lifestyle or personality characteristics okay you can see here actually uh, yeah uh, the dutch is this is in uh, dutch lah denmark is it denmark yeah denmark lah dutch other than denmark uh in uh, where was it again a lot in european countries lah you can see that a lot of people uses a bicycle as their lifestyle for you them to commute from one place to another place okay even vietnam also a lot of bicycle that they use okay 
um, it is part of their lifestyle. So you can also um, segment, okay, other than demographic just now, you can also divide your market based on their social class, lifestyle, or personality, sorry, personality characteristics. This includes social class, some people play polo, some people play uh, football, Okay. Lifestyle, people like to use bicycle, people like to use sports car, people, some people like to use uh, um, Harley, Harvey, Harley and Davison, is it? That particular big bike. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you talk about personality characteristics, some people, uh, they are very um, sporty. So you have that kind of sneakers for them. Right? Some people are very classy, then you might have some uh, loafer shoes or high heels okay, for the uh, market, okay? according to their personality. Then they are also according to emotion. Of course, personality is related to emotion as well. Right? So if you are an emo person, then you will see that a lot of things that are a black color that you will buy. So that's when people or uh, the companies offer things or everything in black color. Okay? So color is also part of how you actually use psychographic segmentation. Next is the behavioral segmentation. This is when you divide a market into segment based on consumer knowledge, attitude, uses of a product or responses to a product. So behavioral segmentation is much more on um, how much uh, or how much knowledge, okay, or how do they use the product, okay, behavior. It's a behavior of the customer. It can be divided according to occasions, benefits sought, user status, usage rate, and also loyalty status. Okay. Uh, you can see example here, the benefit segmentation. You know Fitbit or not? Fitbit is actually this watch. Yeah? Uh, tracking watch. Fitness tracking watch. Okay, that is what Fitbit is doing. All right, so uh, it is for people who are concerned with their health, okay, and fitness tracking. So no matter what bundle or benefit one seeks, there is a Fitbit for everyone because each and every Fitbit will give different purposes in terms of what will be the benefit sought. Okay, if let's say you you do trial turn, for example, then you might require a different Fitbit than you just do yoga or uh, some uh, in-house or in the gym kind of equipment training okay so you will have a different type of watch but that is when fitbit segment their market based on the benefit that they sought okay occasion could be based on um festive seasons all right uh, or whatever uh what they call it um yeah like festivals that people celebrate okay so now you can see that the christmas is around the corner because when you go to the mall you will see a lot of christmas decoration christmas trees christmas ornaments right and if you go to starbucks for example they started to come out with their coffee nut latte crunch all right all the christmas kind of um decoration and also merchandise and drinks okay so that is when it is based on occasion um, typically in US, like, for example, then you will have a uh, champagne for some special occasion, right? Not if you want to drink, you want to celebrate something, then people will drink champagne. In Malaysia, what do you drink when you want to celebrate something? Coke, is it? <laughs> Maybe you just want to have a, a big dinner, right? Not okay, that kind of thing. Next is the benefit sort like Fitbit just now, the user status. So user status could include whether that person is a first time user, okay, or an ex user, or never been a user before, and so on. Okay, when you talk about usage rate, this is how frequent is the product being used. Some people use it uh, every day. So they might need a jumbo size kind of product, uh, like a skincare, for example. Usage rate. You will see that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> guys. Yeah, try to go to Watson or Sephora if you can. Okay, or Guardian. Yes. Um, I think girls you will know. Do you have many skincare? And if you realize, okay, the skincare bottles and also the uh, size, yeah, different for different type of uh, what they call it, uh, usage. 
The cream is different size, the toner is different size, the serum will be different size, the essence will be different size, the uh, sunblock will be a different size, okay? But it could be the same range, okay? That means uh, you will know that from the sizes that they offer, how much would you need to use and how frequent do you need to apply it? That's why you will see normally sunblock, it will be in bigger sizes or... Um, more that you will need because you will need to reapply sunblock many times okay uh while serum for example it will be in a small bottle typically because it is so concentrated that you only need to apply a little bit on your face tutorial skin care well the toner for example is in a bigger bottle or toilet bottles because you will need a lot to put on your cotton pad for you to clean your face or prepare your face before you put makeups and whatsoever Okay, other than that, you can talk about usage rate uh, easily when you can see uh, what they call it, uh, shower gel. You know shower gel, right? If you go to a uh, supermarket again, yes, you will see there are different sizes of the shower gel. There are small size, medium size, and bigger size. So the bigger sizes is for, let's say, household consumption. Let's say in the toilet, you share your toilet with other siblings, right? Then your mom will normally buy a bigger size of the uh, shower gel for everyone to use. But if it is just for you, then perhaps you will need a smaller or a yellow smaller size of the shower gel, okay? And when you talk about loyalty status, how loyal are you towards one brand? Now, um, people can, sorry, marketers can segment their consumer market based on how loyal these people are. Okay, by making sure that if let's say you offer this particular marketing mix, they will always be loyal to you. So there are what they call it uh, totally loyal, somewhat loyal and no loyalty at all. So different products typically will encourage loyalty or not so loyal or even no loyalty at all. Okay, things that are not so... Uh, what they call it significant to your daily life, you may not be so loyal. But some people, they are really loyal and particular about their, uh, let's say, clothing line. So from top to toe, it has to be Adidas. Okay, Adidas cap, Adidas shirt, Adidas pants, Adidas socks, Adidas shoes. Okay, but some people, they don't really matter. Okay, sometimes it's Adidas hats and then you wear Nike shirt and Under Armour shoes. So there is, perhaps you are loyal to three or two brands, okay? Uh, while no loyalty at all, perhaps it, it doesn't really matter, like, for example, your shower gel, okay? This month, you buy uh, Dettol because you are so concerned about the, you know, COVID-19, right? And then uh, after that, you were bored with Dettol already. In the following few months, you will buy uh, Palmer leaf is it? <laughs> or Lux or uh, Shukubutsu. Mm. Okay, so there is no loyalty because typically these products are not really significant or does not really have superior quality. So if you offering something that uh, that is really good, superior quality, uh, all right, using your differentiation strategy by making it totally different than the others that people need to be loyal to you if they want to continue using this product or if they, not using the product, if they want to continue to have that similar or that quality, okay? For example, the Apple users. Apple users, they are really loyal to Apple. Typically, they will have their Apple Watch, Apple iPhone, Apple iPad, lah. iPad, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, ka, AirPods. Ka. What else? The Apple have Apple TV, okay, and so on. So they are very loyal, right? Okay, so nowadays, you don't use only one segment lah. Okay, this is when uh, typically there are better for you to use multiple segmentation, okay? Which you are able to identify smaller and better defined target groups by using the multiple segmentation. Meaning to say you will actually combine some elements of this consumer segmentation basis okay okay you can read this particular example okay next move on 
to the cementing business market. Remember business market meaning to say these are the market that buy the product from you for them to use in their business. Okay, for them to produce other products or for them to use in the process of producing services or products for their business or their shop or their stores, right? So consumer and business market, mar sorry, consumer and business marketers use many of the same variable to segment their market. So similar like what we have in the consumer uh, segmentation just now, the four demographic, psychographic benefits and what was the last one just now? Behavioral segmentation. Okay. So, uh, oops, here. Other than that, okay, additional variables that you may need to consider when you are segmenting your business market is customer operating characteristics, okay, which includes um, how do they operate? Is it a manufacturing company, okay, or is it a factory, or is it a service shop, okay, or is it a retail shop, okay, kind of operating? And then you may want to look in terms of uh, their purchasing approaches as well. How do they do their purchases? Do they use normally cash? Okay, or is it um, using credit? Take the product first, then pay later, that kind of thing. Okay, or is it a uh, bulk purchases? Okay, or you just buy one at one time, All right? Situational factors include like whether um, this market are can be potential contract based. Okay, that means you you have a contract with them. That means every time they will always order only from you. Okay, or is it just for one time purchase only? Right, or is it uh, by seasons? Okay, by seasons that you actually supply the product to them, and other personal characteristics which include some specific certain type of uh, business. Like, uh, if is it a coffee shop? So do you know? Okay, how do you actually uh, segment coffee shop markets? Okay, because there are many coffee shops. Let's say you are the producer of milk. Okay, so you know that my the milk that you are selling is it for the coffee shop? Or is it for uh, the retail stores? Okay, because milk can be used in, uh, in many other businesses. Okay, especially food lah. Okay, moving on to the international market. So again, international markets also you can use geographic segmentation based. Okay, segmenting the international market based on geographic, economic factors, political and legal, cultural and also eh. And also cultural. Okay, so uh, there is one thing that call you call it the intermarket segmentation. Okay, uh, let me s explain this one first. Okay, geography. Of course, you can look at the location of your market. You can group them. Let's say in Australia and New Zealand because they are in the same continent, right? So you can have Asian market, or you can have the uh, China market because China is large itself, right? Because uh, you can also look at the economic factors whereby you can actually group. These are actually perhaps normally they will look at the uh, well-developed countries. How you actually segment your market in that particular well-developed or uh, already developed countries. Developing countries could be different segment or underdeveloped countries different segment or third world countries you may have different segment. Okay, political and legal factors by looking at how stable is the government okay in terms of uh, the relationship between the country that you operate and also the country that you wanted to sell to okay as well as the cultural factors so cultural factors are so important like for example do they speak the same language okay do they speak english or not all right uh, if you talk about the chinese market for example then you look at uh, what chinese uh what they call it language that people commonly use all right so this is important so that you can actually um create a marketing mix especially when you talk about your packaging labeling all right your promotion should be in which type or what language it is all right next one intermarket segmentation okay so this intermarket segmentation involve forming segment of consumer who have similar needs and buying behavior even though they are located in the different countries so we are still in what they call the international market yeah so even though there are different countries okay perhaps they might have different geographic different economic factor different cultural and this political and legal right so you may do this intermarket segmentation okay such as the satellite TV and the internet, which connect 
consumers around the world and marketers can define and reach segments of like whereby they have this uh, like-minded consumers where no matter where they are in the world so that's why let's say you talk about facebook for example so facebook is being used widely by everybody okay so facebook may do this inter-market segmentation whereby uh, they may have the same features okay, same purpose and everything it's just that they might want to uh, change in terms of the language use right so that's why uh, you can have facebook in uh, arabic language uh, japanese language i guess chinese bahasa melayu also have i guess bahasa indonesia and so on okay or even netflix for example see netflix they don't even have to uh, change anything right they, because they know that everybody in the whole world all right they may want to watch tv or may want to watch the movies regardless whatever uh language that the movie uh is uh playing but they offer subtitles in different languages okay so that is how they do the intermarket segmentation here we are able to understand yeah now let's look at how do you make sure that you segment your market effectively okay you can't simply take a whole market and then you just divide them into certain segment you must make sure that when you want to do that segmentation they are measurable accessible substantial differentiable and there have some actionable things now measurable in the way that the size of that particular market their purchasing power and their profiles of the segment can be measured how many of them how much can they spend all right you will be able to understand that accessibility or accessible means that the market segment can be effectively reached and so you say okay i want to segment my market in asia make sure you can sell your product in asia if you are from us okay if you are from india for example and then you want to segment your market you segment your market in uh Papua New Guinea. so make sure that you can access to that particular group of people next is substantiality or substantial that means the market segment are large or profitable enough for you to serve because you remember when you create a segment you're going to create four piece for them so when you create special four piece for them make sure that those four piece are profitable okay that means people will buy the product that you segment for them if everybody turns out they buy the same product then you may not want to segment the market at all all right next is differentiable this is when the segment are conceptually distinguishable and respond differently to different marketing mix element and programs because we're talking about shampoo just now right you remember the shampoo for anti-dandruff anti you have the colored shampoo smooth and silky la, for blacker hair and whatsoever imagine that instead of buying different shampoo everybody with different type of hair will buy just one shampoo then why would you actually produce different shampoos you might just produce one shampoo okay so that is when that we talk about differentiable each segment will actually respond differently towards different marketing mix if you have hair fall problem then you will buy anti-dandruff eh, anti-dandruff anti-hair fall shampoo you don't buy anti-dandruff shampoo unless you have dandruff problems then you will buy the anti-dandruff shampoo so that is how you different differently respond okay you will see the differences in that and actionable meaning it is an effective program that can be designed for attracting and serving the segment meaning you are of doing the marketing mix the four piece for the segment that you have divided okay moving on to the third learning objective which is to explain how companies identify attractive market segment and choose a market targeting strategy so let's first look how do we do market targeting market targeting is remember you have the market now with that particular market you want to target them to buy your product okay these are the group of people that would be possible or most likely will purchase the product or the four piece that you offer for them so you need to evaluate the market segment in order for you to do the market targeting by looking at the segment size and growth of course you must make sure that the segment is of course large enough and there is a potential of growth okay in the future they will be growing there are more people will actually become your target market 
Second, you will look at the segment structural attractiveness, okay, which include strong and aggressive competitors, okay, whether there are so many competitors or not, whether uh, the new entrants are easily uh, be in the market as well or not, okay, looking at the substitute products, are there a lot of substitutes or not? Power of buyers relative to the sellers, right? And powerful suppliers who can control prices, quality or quantity of ordered goods and services. These are how you will look at the structural attractiveness from the structure itself, lah, okay? Many factors. And lastly, you may also want to evaluate the market segment by looking at the company objective and resources. If your objective is actually to cater each and different customer needs, then you might want to have many segments. But you must look at your resources as well because it is not cheap to produce a lot of products for different customers. Yeah, that's why not many shampoos, also not many brands have different types of shampoo. If let's say you think that oh, okay, I just want to specialize in um, uh, anti dandruff shampoo, so you might just come up with a shampoo that is really good to fight against the dandruff then you don't have to bother about other segment because or other types of shampoo because perhaps those shampoo can be bought from your competitors but in order for them to get a superior value remember the best value the unique one then you might want to concentrate on one based on your resources okay Okay, like I told you just now, a target market is a set of buyers who share common needs or characteristics that the company decides to serve because these are the people who will most likely be your customer. Now, there are four strategies that can be done. Okay, undifferentiated marketing, also known as mass marketing. You can also do strategy whereby you use the differentiated marketing or segmented marketing, concentrated marketing or also known as niche marketing and another strategy that you can use is also the micro marketing or also known as local or individual marketing. So when you talk about this undifferentiated or mass marketing, you are basically targeting broadly. Broadly means you perhaps only have one market that everybody will actually buy from you with one offering, one marketing mix. Well, when you do micro marketing or local or individual marketing, you target narrowly, meaning to say you will already have one particular customer, one needs, one marketing mix from them, for them. Okay. Let's look at undifferentiated marketing, which you target the whole market with one offer. It is also known as mass marketing, whereby you will focus on the common needs rather than what is different in the customer's need. For example, Clorox. Do you know Clorox? Clorox, they are doing this undifferentiated marketing because they only produce Clorox. You know that Clorox, right? And you can actually use Clorox for many other purposes, right? Many other uh, things other than just to bleach okay but the main reason or the main uh what they call it, um value okay that the clorox would like to give is actually to bleach okay to bleach you know bleach right to make things white okay bleach lah bleach so um other than bleaching okay bleaching yes people don't use clorox just to do bleaching you also use clorox to clean things try right? not Things young, very dirty, okay? Even some people say, yeah, because of this coronavirus, right? People use Clorox, okay, to kill the virus because it can, like, let's say 99.9% .9 kills the bacteria and virus, okay? So, uh, there is when Clorox, they don't bother to repair or to come out with different, uh, what they call it, Clorox or different types of uh, Clorox, they only have, let's say, one or two, the original flavor, flavor, and then the one, another one is uh, lemon, right, lemon flavor. So you can use those two for whatever purpose that you want, okay? Regardless, the need is actually to clean the floor, to clean the clothes, to clean the kitchen, to clean the uh, car wash, okay? It is just to clean, 
Alright, so that is when Cloro is doing this undifferentiated marketing, which they target the whole market with one offer, which is the bleach itself, the Clorox. Okay. Second is differentiated marketing, which you target several different market segments and design separate offers for each. This is like the shampoo just now that I told you, different type of shampoo for different people's hair. Alright, same goes to this particular type, uh, detergent, yeah. So the goal is to achieve higher sales and stronger position because people might already remember, okay, if I want to use this one, this is what I will use for floor, fabuloso, for example, for uh, making things white, Clorox, okay, for let's say varnish, for example, for you to bleach your colored uh, fabrics, right? So uh, by doing this differentiated marketing, it will be more expensive, yeah. So you need require you require more resources because you will prepare different products, different marketing mix for different segment, right? Next is concentrated marketing, which you target a large of a smaller market. What does it mean by large of a smaller market? That means these are larger market, right? And then you are targeting smaller one. But even though they are small, they are valuable because they might use or buy the product frequently. So that is what it means by large of a smaller market, right? You normally you do this because of your limited company resources, because you know about the market itself and it is actually more effective and efficient than the differentiated just now. Now, a good example other than this uh, stance socks, all right, is Starbucks, okay? Starbucks also do concentrated marketing. Remember, it is also known as niche marketing, yeah? So, why do I say Starbucks do concentrated marketing? Because they offer coffee. Basically, in Starbucks, you go, for, you go to Starbucks because of coffee, typically, all right? You name it any coffee, then they have it from the Americano, from the Frappuccino, from their latte. They have different types of coffee, okay, beans, and the preparation of the uh, coffee, cold brew or uh, whole brew and whatsoever kind of brew, right? They have the knowledge about the market because they know people love coffee, will drink coffee. So they are targeting coffee lovers. From all of the people in the world, they are targeting people who love to drink coffee. So perhaps this is a smaller market. But even though smaller market, people who drink coffee, they really drink coffee, you know, you not? Know? Right? Every day they must drink coffee, two or three cups of coffee. So that is what it means by you are targeting. Yes, you make sure that you have that group of people. They are small in number, but in terms of the growth or in terms of the profitability, it is large, right? Lastly, micro-marketing, which is the practice of tailoring products and marketing programs to suit the taste of specific individuals and location. Okay, so you can do local marketing or individual marketing. So local marketing, of course, it involves the uh, geographic segmentation as well, yeah? By looking at or uh, tailoring the brands and promotion to the needs and wants of local customer segment by looking at the cities, neighborhood, or even the stores itself. A good example of local marketing is when uh, McD, you know McDonald's, all right? When they go to India, they don't sell beef burger, Big Mac, uh, what else? the quarter pounder with cheese, the double cheeseburger, all from beef. Because they understand the culture aspect of Indian people, the Hindus, yeah? To them, the cow, the yeah, the cow is the god, right? You know, the goddess. So they do local marketing in the way that in that particular city, in that particular region, they don't sell beef patties burger. So they will come up with the fish burgers, vegetables, burgers, burgers, because many of them are vegetarian. Another example is KFC. In Malaysia, KFC sells hot and spicy chicken. You don't get hot and spicy chicken in Japan, hot and spicy chicken in US, for example, because they know the taste of Malaysian. Uh, they love spicy food. Okay, so that is how they do local marketing. Other than that, it could be also the car. You know, cars, uh, let's say uh, you are a multinational company or international company like Toyota, for example. You want to sell your car in Malaysia, you must understand the road system in Malaysia. Okay, so that's when they put, is it on the left? hand side driver or on the right hand side driver okay 
compared to US, for example, then if Toyota wanted to sell their car in US, they must make sure that the production of the cars that they sell are according to the road system of the United States of America. Okay? And lastly, individual marketing. So still in the micro marketing, yeah? micro marketing, you have two, local and individual. So we talk about individual marketing, which involves tailoring product and marketing program to the needs and preferences of individual customers. That means you custom made tailor. You know tailor, right? Tailor will custom made your baju for you, just for you. So that is when they do individual marketing. That means you produce the product according to the order, made to order. Okay. Uh, a good example is that if you can go to uh, Ding Tea or uh, Cha Time, is it? Tea Life, for example. So they do individual marketing with all the different types of uh, drinks that they can offer to you. You can just choose whatever drink you want. You want tea. What type of tea you want? With milk or without milk? Is it a fresh tea or not fresh? Don't they, not fresh, right? it's powdered tea. All right? And then you can add on the topping. You can tell what is the level of your ice the level of sugar, what are the toppings that you want to put in your drink, then they will make just for you, All right? So that is individual marketing other than just tailoring just now, lah. okay? Remember, individual marketing is also known as one-to-one -one marketing or mass customization. Don't get confused with mass marketing, okay? Mass marketing, oops. mass marketing is undifferentiated, the Clorox is now. When you talk about micro marketing, it is mass customization. Okay, mass customization here. So, how do you select target market segment? You choose the targeting strategy will depend on the company resources. Okay, how much money you have, how much uh, expertise do you have? Okay, product availability. How many products do you want to offer? How uh, the variety of products. Okay, the product life cycle stage, don't worry so much about this. We will learn this one in the later chapter, right? Market viability, you're talking about different markets or only just one market, okay? And you also want to look at the competitors' marketing strategies, how your competitors are doing. Sometimes it's good to follow them. Sometimes it's just good to be your own or to do your own strategy. The last learning objective is to discuss how company differentiate and position their product for maximum competitive advantage. So this is the last one. I hope I can finish within one hour. All right. So first thing first, we're going to look at the product position. Okay. We're going to look at the differentiation and positioning. First, we look at the positioning. Now, product position is actually the way the product is defined by consumers on important attributes. Okay. So when you remember that thing or when you see that product, what will you remember? Or when you remember something, you will automatically remember a brand or a product. Okay? So, that is how you put it as positioning. Right? Example here, IKEA does not just more than just selling affordable home furnishing. What they do is that life improvement store. Have you been to IKEA? I hope you have been there. Okay. So, next, we look at positioning maps. Positioning maps is one way that you can do to show consumers' perceptions of marketers' brand versus competing products on important buying dimensions. This is when you do your own analysis. Yeah? For example, in this figure 7.3, you will see positioning map of luxury, large luxury SUVs. Okay? So you may have different brands with different colors here. Tak nampak pula dia punya legend. What is this, this and this? Okay, from here, you can see that the location of each circle shows where consumer position a brand on two dimensions, which is the first one is their luxury and uh, performance. Another one is their price. Okay. Thus, Toyota's Land Cruiser is a niche brand that is perceived to be relatively expensive and more performance. So, if you are at here, for example, I think this is Toyota Land Cruiser lah because it has a relatively high performance and price also on the top here, top notch, right? While you talk about something like it's luxurious, less luxurious is here, but more performance is here. But then if it is luxurious, that means it is somewhere here. Pink one lah, basically, which I'm not sure what brand of the SUV 
Maybe you can look at the textbook and tell me, yeah? Okay, next one. In choosing a differentiation and position strategy, first, you need to identify a set of possible competitive advantage to build a position. Now, what is competitive advantage? From the word competitive, meaning you know that it is a competition, yeah? And then advantage, meaning to say you are at the advantage of that competition. So competitive advantage, simply meaning you are better than the others. Okay? You are different than the others. You are superior than the others. Okay? So first you need to identify the set of possible values that you will actually tell we are different than the others. We are totally better than the others, superior than the others. Remember your competitors. Lah. The others are your competitors. Okay? Next, you choose the right competitive advantage. What is it? Select the overall positioning strategy and then you communicate and deliver the chosen position of the market. So let's look. The competitive advantage just now can be gained by offering consumer greater value. Even, let's say, it can be also lower prices or by providing more benefits then justify your higher prices. Example, iPhone 12. Oops. iPhone 12 is priced at that particular amount. Now you know how much is the price, right? You can go and see. But why people still buy? Because the benefits that they see. So that is when iPhone has the competitive advantage in a way that its processor, its iOS, yeah, that is totally different than other Android phones. So that is a competitive advantage that uh, iPhone, Apple is using. Okay, or you can also put competitive advantage in a way that it is the lowest prices. You can't get any lower than this price. For example, AirAsia, AirAsia position, okay, your competitive advantage or the value is that you can. Everybody can fly. Everyone can fly at the lower prices. In the end, okay, you just want to get from one point to another point faster. That's why you use airlines. Or in terms of Sabah and uh, Sarawak to go to West Malaysia, there's no other way. Like you cannot use sampan lah, or ferry. So you need to use the airline. But you can choose a lot of other airlines. But you will always see the cheapest one typically will be the brand of AirAsia. It offers the lower lowest prices okay that could be something different also so the moment you remember i want to fly i want to fly somewhere the first thing that you will remember is you want to check the asia ticket price you don't think about malindo first or malaysia airline first isn't it you will always think of oh let me check the asia first see you always think of the lowest price air asia so that is a competitive advantage that air asia can actually give you can also identify a set of possible competitive advantage along with the line of the product itself, perhaps the quality of the product, okay, even the services that you want to offer together with the product. Let's say good services, like customer service. Okay, channels, right? Channels in a way that where can the product will be sold? Is it available everywhere? Okay, or is it only at certain stores? That is how you actually can um, differentiate, okay? The people, meaning to say the uh, service personnel, okay, or um, normally people are for services, lah, like hospitals, okay? When you have a good doctor, all right? A very, um, what do you call it, uh, expert specialist, right? That will actually uh, can, you know, diagnose people or cure some, you know, do some major operation, then you can actually... Um, position your competitive advantage using people okay and also the image image could include things like uh, the brand name okay the prestige or the exclusivity of it right like rolex you know louis vuitton those are based on image lah. next one how you're going to choose okay so you make sure that the competitive advantage, yeah, be it you want to use any of these five, okay, you must make sure that it has this particular seven elements, lah, right? It is important because the element of the competitive advantage has a difference that delivers a highly valued benefit to the target 
buyers. You can't say that, oh, okay, I have this phone and it uses Android and then it is good. Then what will be the important attribute of the phone? Okay, unlike when you talk about iPhone, then it is totally important that you know in iPhone you have the iOS, the processor, and it is distinctive. Distinctive means totally different, yeah? Which competitors do not offer that particular difference. You cannot get it in other suppliers or other shops, right? The company can offer it in a more distinctive way. Next is superior, you know, like it has to be better than the others. Communicable, meaning to say it can be shown, it is visible to the buyers, right? Preemptive, in a way that competitors cannot easily copy the difference. Affordable, of course, that means the buyer can afford to pay for the difference of your product with the others. That's why Apple user, no matter how expensive this Apple products, they still can afford to buy. And they're willing to spend, they're willing to save money, kaparut and whatsoever, you know, Biar ada iPhone, wala tak ada credit. See? Hmm. And profitable. Of course lah, the company can introduce the product difference profitability in a way that, of course, it is profitable to the company because you want to offer something is totally different. Make sure that people buy lah. Kalau people tak buy, then it's not going to be profitable. Okay? So, uh, you can also use value proposition, okay, which is the full mix of benefits upon which a brand is positioned. When you talk about positioning strategy, you can look at what is the value proposition of the product, okay, uh, in terms of, let's say, price and also benefits. Lah. Of course, people will value things based on its price right now. The more expensive it is, the more benefit that people think they will get, all right? The less expensive, the cheaper it is, then the less benefits that people will thought of. Okay. Next, you want to choose a positioning statement. Okay. The positioning statement will summarize company or brand positioning using this form. You want to what? Okay. To your target market or target segments and needs. Okay. That our brand, our product, this particular product is what concept is it? That point of some different. Okay. So let's look at example of this particular. Uh, positioning example by Evernote. You know Evernote, right? You should know, huh? Because they have positioned themselves, all right, as two busy multitaskers who need help remembering things. Evernote is a digital content management application that makes it easy to capture and remember moments and ideas from your everyday life using your computer, phone, tablet, and the web. With Evernote, you will actually remember your digital content, your digital things, your diary, as a, as, a, as a diary, as a reminder, as your shopping list, as your appointment list, and so on. All right, and it will be organized, synchronized with your calendars and everything. It's an app that will actually make it easy for you to capture and remember the moments. So you use Evernote. So that is how Evernote shows that what will be their target segment and need. What is their brand? What would be the concept? And what in what way that the point of difference that they have? Right? Lastly, when you already select your segment, positioning statement, okay, you will communicate and deliver the chosen position. Okay, you choose the positioning. It's often easier than implementing the position itself. Of course, lah, you plan, then you implement. It's not that easy, okay? But then you need to establish a position or changing one usually will take a long time, okay? It doesn't take a day for you to position things because positioning is not something that you sell, okay? It is earned, okay? Positioning is earned by the company and it is done by the customers, okay? And maintaining the position requires consistent performance and communication, all right, that's why you, you do a lot of communication in the way that you do your advertisement, okay? You do your promotion. Everything is towards pos rightly positioning your product so that it will consistent to what you actually plan, right? Because uh, you don't want to have a situation whereby your position is so good, but then it turns out that it is positioned wrongly, okay? For example, Proton Car has been, uh, has been positioned wrongly because... When I say proton car, what 
automatically comes to your mind. Did you say a high quality car or poor quality car? Right? So I think you know the answer. Right? So changing that poor quality car to a high quality car, it doesn't take one day. It takes a long time and still proton in the process of changing that positioning. Whereby people might want to, uh, proton want people to think that this proton car is as good as any other imported car, Toyota, Honda, uh, BMW, or even Mercedes and Lexus and so on. Okay, so doing that is when you need to actually do consistent performance. You need to show you don't make king, you don't make a poor quality car. You don't show that there are a lot of def, uh, what they call defects and um, weaknesses of the car. Then you must make sure that it is consistent performance and you communicate it to the customer all right so with that we have finished chapter five sorry i see a few seconds after one hour all right so i hope you are able to understand the whole learning objective of this particular uh chapter all right if you have any questions please ask me in our telegram chat thank you guys bye